welcome you, Cynthia, on our program today. Thank you very much, Deborah. A brief of who Cynthia is. Ah, uh, okay, Cynthia Zondezulu. Yeah, that's my full name. Um, I'm 25 years of age. I am a media personality. Uh, that is to say both radio and television. Uh, apart from that, I am a voiceover actress, uh, an actual actress, mm -hmm. <laughs> and part-time dancer. I love to dance. <laughs> I can imagine. I yeah. feel like I'll, I'll learn how to dance. Oh yeah, we should definitely do something <laughs> at the end of this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Walk us through your creative journey. How did it start? Whew, okay. Um, funny because I actually never thought that I would end up in the media industry. Mm -hmm. So growing up, uh, I was very athletic. Uh, I grew up in South Africa, did my primary school in South Africa. And I was very athletic uh, in the sense that I did track and field. Mm -hmm. uh, I played football. I played hockey. I did high jump. I did long jump. And I was the best. I was the fastest runner in school. So initially, I thought I would end up at the Olympics. <laughs> That's what I actually told myself. <laughs> but then it happened that I came for secondary school here in Malawi. Mm -hmm. So I went to Matindi Girls Academy uh, between 2009 and 2012. And there wasn't a lot of sports going on. So that actually shifted my focus away from the sports. And I actually never really knew what I was going to become in life. Growing up, I was good at computers. So initially what happened when I finished school was my dad, knowing that I was good at computers, he was like, why don't you go to the polytechnic to study IT? And I didn't even argue with him because I was actually very good with computers. And I was like, oh yeah, let's do it. But what happened was in secondary school, I started acting, which is Atom, that is. And um, by the end of that period, um, the directors that were directing our play for our school uh, asked me to go over to Blanta to have an experience of what actual theater is because they thought that I had the potential to like, you know, get far with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, luckily uh, I have very supportive <laughs> parents mm -hmm. and I told my parents and my dad wasn't around at the moment, but I had called him. My mom was around. I had called my dad and I had told him and he was like, oh yeah, sure. You never know what you're going to become in life. Mm -hmm. That's what my parents have always told me uh, in life. And I'm very thankful for that because it has actually helped shape the person that I am today. So I went to Blanta, did a little bit of theater performances, got to uh, act with some of the big names in, in the theater uh, uh, industry. Tripeg uh, Caesar. you know, I got the chance to work with him, which was great. And I got to work with different theater uh, companies. And I learned a lot from that. Uh, that period happened, I came back and I went back again for school at the Polytechnic in Blanta and uh, I was studying IT. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it happened that when I was doing my advanced diploma, I got myself a job in IT. Yeah. And then it was a new company, they had financial problems and I was just a student. I needed to make money to, exactly. you know, make a living. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work out so well. So I told them that, you know what, when you sort your things out, let me know. I'll start coming back to work. And I had a really good friend of mine whom till today, when I look back at who I am today, it was because of her pushing me to get into the media industry. So her name is Beatrice Chingualu. Mm -hmm. And she's actually a radio presenter as well at Yoneko FM. And she was studying journalism. And she came to me one day. We were staying together at the same hostels. And she's like, dude, why don't you get into Radio 2FM, Funline Mix? And I was like, me? Like, I don't even listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, she was doing journalism. So she had an idea of how that goes. But she simply told me that you've got the personality for it. And I'm pretty sure that you can actually do well. So I took her advice. I listened to her and I went. And let's just say that that was the beginning of who I am today. And I'm very grateful for that. So I got into radio at Radio 2FM. Um, I got to work with amazing people like uh, James Goomba, who is one of the people that I also look back and I'm thankful for because he gave me an opportunity to be on one of his shows back then where we promote Malawian uh, urban music. And I got to meet a lot of artists and we were on air every Saturday together, every Saturday night, which also uh, helped me become more confident in what I do and also opened uh, more areas for me which led to my hosting because apparently if I'm confident on radio I can be confident uh, in front of a crowd of people mm -hmm. so that happened and I was at Radio TFM for two years it was an amazing time and um, from there on I went to Zodiac 
So what happened with Zodiac is we had started a TV program called Base 265, a group of us. So there was me, there was a friend of mine, Donald Zimba, there was Ronald CZ, the video videographer, and Cameron. Those guys were behind the cameras. And we started our own program. It was an enta entertainment program. And we happened to have one attender with Team Veni and they were broadcasting our program. And one of the producers from Zodiac so what I did as a presenter and they wanted me on board on their team so he approached me at one of the sand festivals and he was like you're Cynthia Zonde Zulu right I'm like yeah that's me it's like oh we watch you on base 265 and I think you're great and we want you on our team I was like oh okay but I live in Blanta you guys are like in the long it's like yeah I'm also only a producer but I can you know arrange uh, an interview and the rest is up to you I was like okay uh, my mom wanted me back in the city anyway. <laughs> so when I came through, uh, I went for the interview and they picked three girls. And we started our internship for like six months. Mm -hmm. And I mostly did presenting and a little bit of producing. And after those six months, uh, I got an extra three months probation from Zodiac. You know, mm -hmm. they were actually, I like to think they were impressed with what I did, that they wanted to like, offer me three more months of probation to see where that will take us. And in that period, um, Zatu Pawailesi had come up. Mm -hmm. And these guys were amazing, you know. They were everywhere. And uh, I went to do an interview uh, with a band, the Zatu band, at their offices for Fresh on Zodiac. And uh, I did the interview. I was just going there to do my job. <laughs> but it happened that by the end of the week, I got a phone call. Uh, them asking me if I could work outside Zodiac. It was for stage, which was fine. Uh, and I was like, oh yeah, sure. I don't, I don't mind. I can definitely do that. So me doing that work for them for, a, it was about a week. We traveled the country for a week. And at the end of that, they offered me a job. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> yes, that was that was that was like, oh okay, I'm doing something right, mm -hmm. you know. And um, but yeah, from Zodiac, I went to Zatu Pawelesi for over two years. I've, I've been with them for over two years, and honestly, all I can say is that every step in my career has helped me become the person that I am, and I've been able to grasp something new from every point of. Uh, place in my career that I'm, at, that I'm at and it's definitely shaped me to be a better media personality and whatever it is that I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Walk us through your creative journey. How did it start? Uh, the journey has been amazing, exhilarating. I honestly enjoy what I do and I, I, I actually like to think that there's been many personalities out of me mm -hmm. because starting out with Radio 2 FM, I was well known for being DJ Vuvu. <laughs> And at Zodiac as well, I was DJ Vuvu. But when I got to go to Zatu Pawailesi, I turned out to be a CZ. Don't ask, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I turned out to be CZ. Um, I don't know, because just in line with what Zatu was working with, it seemed, uh, it seemed like a, a better option for me to change my name. And um, CZ was one of the things that I came up with because Cynthia Zonde Zulu is just like, oh, cut it short, CZ, you know, that sort of thing. But otherwise, um, it's been an amazing journey because I've seen the impact that what I, the impact that what I do has, especially on young people. Mm -hmm. um, I mostly saw that with Zatu Pawailesi because we worked uh, very closely with uh, different communities on ground. And just being able to have somebody come to you and tell you that they want to be like you when they grow up or they really look up to you and, you know, that, that sort of thing is what makes me continue doing what I do. You know, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for the kids out there that have a dream to be somebody like me, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really great. You put smiles on people's faces. Honestly, for me, that's, that's, that's what matters the most mm -hmm. yeah so it's been a great journey and uh, i can't say i know it all i'm still learning i learn every day from i've had the chance to work with amazing people i've had the chance to host huge uh events and festivals mm -hmm. and for me honestly i look back and i can proudly say that i'm proud of myself mm -hmm. you know most people just 
work to have other people be proud of them but at the end of the day you have to be proud of yourself because that's what keeps you going you know you shouldn't rely on other people's opinions yeah there's always going to be people that have different opinions of you but at the end of the day are you proud of what you're doing because if you are and then that's what pushes you to continue doing what you do honestly i really love your story but it looks like it has been rosy from the start, right? No, it has not. Do you also meet these obstacles, these problems? <laughs> yes, I definitely do. Okay, I want to know from you. How do you deal with the bad days that you meet as a creative artist? Um, it first of all, it has not just been a rosy uh journey for me, not at all. Um ah, there's so much I want to tell you, but I can't. <laughs> but how do I deal with the bad days? Honestly, Radio Tefam was the foundation for who I am because with live radio you need to go on a as somebody that millions of people are listening to yeah so what they always told us is you leave your problems by the door <laughs> you know you're coming to do work you're coming to talk to millions of people that are facing so many different types of problems everybody's got a problem mm-hmm. at the end of the day but you're going there for somebody to listen to you and maybe be a hope in one way or another so you we were always told to leave our problems by the door and honestly that helped me because in whatever it is that I'm doing no matter what it is that I'm going through personally and emotionally I actually have to switch that off and get into a mode of I need to do this you know so that is how I honestly uh handle such situations and it's it's been very helpful of course at the end of the event or whatever it is that I'm doing is just like back to reality mm-hmm. and i love the fact that it it's, it's it's like a whole new character all in all you know you it's not necessarily putting on a face or anything but it's also a side of you that is able to come out as a creative most people i have friends i sit down and we just like talk normally but you see the difference when i go in air or I'm in front of a camera or I'm in front of a thousand of thousands of people hosting an event it's very different because I have to switch modes to be able uh to attain to that certain environment so it's it it honestly allows me to be <laughs> a number of people I could say and it's also easy for me to relate to other people so that also helps in being able to understand somebody in whatever it is that you're doing because at the end of the day that's how you're able to be on par with the other person you know uh coming down to their level understanding them so that you guys are able to accomplish whatever it is that you want to do what are the greatest lessons you have learned so far as a creative artist oh greatest lessons um life is beautiful mm-hmm. um honestly it is and there's a whole lot of beautiful people out there and honestly it has also taught me to just be grateful and to thank god that i am who i am today and honestly don't think that I would have ever made it if it wasn't for God you know just always being there for me and always putting up for me every single time even though when there are days when I felt like nothing is going right you know it was it was always him that always showed up and be like oh no but you're great remember who you are so i honestly have learned so much from it and i'm still learning <laughs> Yeah and just being able to come across amazing people I I've, I've had the honor of working with great creatives great people no matter what industry they are just being able to meet different types of people and also being able to learn about life itself so yeah as we are wrapping up our program and set to say that i know there are a lot of creative artists watching the program right now i wanted to know your inspiration to those watching the program right now um always believe in yourself uh you're doing what you're doing for a reason and honestly if you love what you're doing it makes things so much easier trust me <laughs> it makes so much things so much easier and uh don't let anybody hold you back and if certain people don't understand what you're doing it's okay uh there's not always going to be everybody that that's going to be in agree- agreement with what you're doing or understand what you're doing but never change yourself uh be- for people that won't be able to understand you at the end of the day just keep pushing believing in yourself and just i honestly am big on family you know uh 
just being close with your family, honestly, for me, that, that's amazing because at the end of the day, like I mentioned earlier, my parents and my family have always uh, believed in me and have always told me that, you know what, especially my dad, you know, I tell him this is what I want to do. And he's like, oh, yeah, if there's somebody that I know can be able to accomplish what they want, it's you. And for me, I, I honestly want you guys to see me hosting uh, a red carpet event in the United States of America or hosting some uh, Grammy award. That's, 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 how much, that's how far I want to go. And I honestly believe that it's possible. Mm -hmm. You might have people putting you down, but just believe in yourself and your dream and no dream is too big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining our conversation today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, beautiful creatives, that marks the end of our beautiful program today. Do it your own creative way right here on my Mbambande platform with me, Deborah Mbali. Until next time, when I'll bring you another beautiful edition of Do It Your Own Creative Way. It's bye-bye for now.